Hi there. Today we are going to be discussing what unicellular and multicellular organisms are and discussing the differences between the two. So if you think about the prefixes of each of these words, uni and multi, and then the base word there, which is cellular, uh, we can see that we're talking about the amount or the number of cells in an organism. So let's talk about what a unicellular organism is versus a multicellular. So a unicellular, again, uni meaning one, cellular meaning related to cells, is an organism that is made up of or consists of only one single cell. So that means that that single cell is the entire organism. Now, if it's an organism, we know it's alive, therefore, that one single cell on its own must complete all six of the life processes that we discussed in our first lesson. So if we think back to that lesson, uh, thinking about reproduction, adaptation, the use of energy, and all of the others, one single cell performs all of those processes by itself. These organisms, as they are made up of only one single cell, tend to be very, very, very small in size and not very complex, meaning pretty simple organisms. So as we go through the lesson, we're going to look at some examples of these, but you can think about bacteria as an example. So can be very dangerous to us, but is very, very small. It's actually microscopic. We can't see it with our eyes. And is much less complex than perhaps a human or an animal. Now, thinking about human or animals, that leads us to a multicellular organism. So, you guys have probably already thought in your head what a multicellular organism must be. Uh, multicellular simply means that it's an organism made up of multiple or more than one cell. In a lot of cases, think of yourself or a plant or an animal, we're talking about many, 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 actually millions or billions or trillions of cells, depending on what kind of organism we're talking about. So again, multicellular just meaning it is made of more than one cell. This also means that there are different types of cells within that organism to perform different life processes. So with these organisms having multiple cells and multiple types of cells, they're able to have specializations or cells that perform different uh, specialized functions. And these organisms, being made up of more than one cell, tend to be much larger in size and also much more complex. So I mentioned this when talking about unicellular, but if you think comparing a human or an animal or even a plant to a single-celled bacteria, we can see that those multicellular organisms are much more complex organisms. Oh, you guys are still there. I'm just hanging out with this multicellular organism, Sanzo, the bearded dragon, our class pet. So now that we've talked about unicellular versus multicellular organisms, let's talk about how we are able to actually see cells. So since cells are too small for us to see with our naked eye, we need to use a device called a microscope. The microscope takes the very, very small, small cells and magnifies them until they're large enough for us to see. So now, attached to this lesson, you will be able to find this Google Slideshow. In the Google Slideshow, you will find several examples of magnified images of cells from under a microscope. You will find several examples of different unicellular organisms, as you can see, as well as different examples of cells from multicellular organisms, including humans, plants, and animals. What I'd like you to do now is take a moment to go and open the Google Slideshow and take a closer look at all of our magnified examples of unicellular and multicellular organisms. Take a look at what the cells of all the different organisms look like under the microscope. 